Lights off. Lights on. Lights off. Lights on. Hello and welcome to a different part of the Most Valuable Podcast studio. Uh, some of you guys may have already been introduced to our door or this light switch. The light switch is lit and that's cool. Um, I don't mean that in a slang way. I mean that in the fact that literally it is illuminated. Uh, so I did another uh, another mock draft. This is my mock draft 2.0, uh, and you guys can see it on mostvaluablepodcast.com. The link is down in the description, uh, and so a lot of things have changed. You know, the, I wanted to get this out before, but then the combine happened, and then free agency happened, and I'm glad I didn't do it because I actually had a version of it. Um, so I guess you could call this like 2.1 or something, but let's not worry about that. Uh, I had a version, and then a lot of stuff happened. So I had to kind of change some things. Uh, so here, here, let's do this. Uh, I'm just going to go through a few of the things that, that I found kind of, kind of interesting, kind of worthwhile. Um, and then, of course, you guys can check it out on the website and comment down below all about it. So first of all, I want to say one thing that some people are going to be, I know we have a lot of Chicago Bears fans here, uh, and I know this is something they'll comment about. So I have Corey Davis going to the Chicago Bears. Uh, and the reason why is I really like Corey Davis uh, people want to criticize the talent that he faced. It's not his fault that he played in the MAC. Um, so he really, really showed up when he was needed. And the thing about the Chicago Bears is the last time they lost one of these high-profile wide receivers, being Brandon Marshall, Ryan Pace immediately went and got himself Kevin White in the first round. Kevin White doesn't exist. He's not a real person, I don't think. He never shows up because uh, he's always injured. So... There's still not a wide receiver. The number one wide receiver is Cameron Meredith. Can't happen. Ryan Pace, I think, might just go out and get himself another wide receiver. Um, you know, he got himself some options, but he doesn't have a number one guy. And Corey Davis maybe could be that. Uh, so to, to talk about some of these other things here, you know, I do have multiple quarterbacks going, uh, and it shouldn't be surprising that the same quarterbacks I had going last time and. And Mitch Trubisky, Mitch Trubisky, I keep getting this confused because we like to call him Michael Trubisky uh, on the onside kick. Um, but Mitch, because I refuse to call him Mitchell, uh, Mitch Trubisky, you know, I, I still think he's the number one quarterback in the draft. Um, and it's not going to take that long for Deshaun Watson to show up. Uh, these teams are not going to surprise anybody because I don't think Cleveland is uh, actually going to believe in Brock Osweiler. Um, the surprise uh, currently in this mock draft, which I, I definitely think will probably change as soon as they acquire Tony Romo, is the Houston Texans. Uh, I have them grabbing Kaiser uh, at the end of the first round because they, they don't have a quarterback. Originally, I was thinking, well, they can't just let Brock Osweiler, the absolute colossal failure that he was in Houston, they can't let him trot back out onto the field. The fans will literally revolt. Um, now they don't have a quarterback. So they have to show that they're doing something. And there really are a team that's really like one piece away from being actual contenders. Um, not that I think Kaiser is a guarantee to be that, but they got to try something. If they were going to try for Brock Osweiler, they're going to be willing to try for a guy like Kaiser. Um, so I also, of course, think that the Saints are very interesting because of what they can do here. The Saints' two biggest needs both are in the defensive back. Uh, with a safety and a cornerback, the first round is full of that. You know, they can get a guy like uh, you know, they're gonna be a little back for the back. Maybe they get uh, maybe they get Baker out of Washington. Maybe they can get Jabril Peppers out of Michigan uh, for safeties. They're definitely gonna have a pick of the litter for cornerbacks. Like I said, there are a ton uh, of corners available, and I know I had multiple running backs going last time, but this time I pulled back. Only Leonard Fournette. You guys will see where he goes. He falls a little bit uh, in this mock draft than most people probably would expect. But go check out the mock draft. It is on mostvaluablepodcast.com. Please let me know what you think. Let me know where you know you guys agree, disagree. And, of course, this is going to be out of date at some point because of free agency. But that's why Ricky and I keep updating him. His uh, next 3.0 will be up in probably a few weeks. Uh, so just check out everything. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you know when these things happen. Follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod. I'm at the Mark Weber with two E's, so make sure you check that out. Like the video, comment down below, and make sure to check out 
the full mock draft on mostvaluablepodcast.com. Thanks for checking out this video, guys.